method to use up tungsten beads that refuse to get around the bendy hooks. Now this is the, the pattern I'm going to be tying. I call it the upright nymph. Uh, this is just a pheasant tail nymph, as you can see. I've actually got it tied onto a, a rapala knot. This is the way I like to fish it's certain nymphs. I'm just going to use a, a normal hook. This is a Camasan, it's a B175 size 10. It's quite a strong hook. Now I'm going to, I, I fish barbless so mostly, so this is how I de-barb the hook. I just simply put it, the barb into the points of the jaws, and then I just tighten up, and that squeezes the, the barb, closes the barb. Makes it much easier to return the fish if you do that. And then obviously put it into the vise. Thread I'm going to be using, because the first thing I put on the hook is a uni thread 8 and olive. And I've got my wax, which I normally keep on the side of my finger. Just run the thread through, put a good layer of wax onto the thread and plenty of grip. You start at the eye, and you take the thread down to the point, and then I'm going to bring it halfway back up. Now you could bring it sort of two thirds of the way, which should what would happen if you take the bead further down, this would be probably in line as start of the, the thorax. It would give it more of a 90 degree bend from the nylon. Uh, if you wanted to sit more slightly lower, then you take the thread turns a wee bit further up, in this case halfway back up. Now, as I say, I've got a pile of beads here that I can get round hooks. And this is, a, as I say, this is a great way of using them up. Now, three main colours I like to use is black, gold and copper. Now I'm just going to use a gold on this one. I've got, this is six pound nylon. And I'm going to put the bead onto it. Just to show you what I'm doing, there's a large hole and a small hole. The small hole on first. As you can see the large hole there. Now the reason this bead can't go in is because it's slightly malformed, it's twisted, the, the bead's actually twisted. But as I say, it's a great way of using them up. And then, to hold them onto the nylon, or hold the bead on anyway, just melt the nylon, build up the nylon, keep going, and then push the bead up against it and press your nail up against it. And that flattens, as you can see there, the nylon and it stops it pulling off. I mean, it'll not come off, it's solid. And then, attaching the, the bead to the hook shank, just on the top, I went to good two or three turns behind, two or three turns or so at the front. Then I like to sort of take the thread up the nylon, posting it, and then bring the thread down. Now, don't put it flush against the shank, because what I like is to get some dubbing underneath there which will hold it tight. But because you've got the bead on that side, it will cause the the hook, or the fly, sorry, or the hook to sit upside down in the water like that. And then, just come in, we trim away the excess nylon, but round about two thirds of the body at least, and then come down nice and tight. Make sure you watch your thread. You could put a tiny bit of super glue on there, make sure it's not going to pull out, but I mean, if you pull that out, the fly would be destroyed anyway, so... Anyway, take your thread turns down, just slightly around the bend. For the tail, now, I like to use I've some dyed, in this case I'm going to tie an olive pheasant tail version. I've got some partridge here, dyed olive, it's one of the larger feathers. Just remove some of the fluff. You can use hackle fibre if you want, get the ends lined up, tear it off once I've lined up, length, body length, and just catch it on the top, a couple of turns, to be a quick look, see how the tail's sitting, that looks okay, trim away the excess. Now the rub of this fly is a UT UTC wire, in this case it's chartreuse. Now I'm using small. Now you could use an extra small in this fly as well. Depends on how much of the colour you want to see. And I certainly want to see a bit more of the colour. So now when you catch this one, 
full length of the body. Got a couple of turns there. And then we've got like chartreuse dyed. In this case, this is a no, this is a cock pheasant tail. Yeah. About at least half a dozen fibres for this. Two, four, six. Because I went to form or tie these tips forward of the eye. I went three fibres either side to give the impression of the legs. So what I'm going to do is catch this in with the legs, at least the body length. So if you do your body length, I want that forward from the bead. And then I come in over the top, tying them in. Just ignore them just now. Just nice and tight. Just take your thread, turns up. Now, uh, see, we get closer to the ends of these fibres, it pays you to have three either side of the bead. Just like that. So you can see three either side. And then you want to bring pheasant tail fibre up. I wind this the opposite way I wind my thread, so I wind it towards myself. A point there. Bring the take the pheasant tail across your thread, do a turn over the top, and then one onto the hook shank. Over the top of the pheasant tail and one onto the hook shank. Do that three times should be enough to hold it. And then trim away the excess. And bring your wire up through the normal way you wind. I like it quite close because I, I want a nice, I want the colour to show through. Again, up, bring it beside your thread, 90 degree bend. And all I do there is concentrate and tying, tying in the wire, a good few turns, and then bend and break it away because you will need to cut if you do that. Now for the body, I'm going to use just natural fox squirrel or fox dubbing, and a tiny bit, this is ice dub, uh, this is dark olive, all I'm going to do is blend them together, just pull it in between your fingers, just mixing it up, and then, it should dub quite easy, it's easy stuff to dub on, and there we go, just slide it up, just build up your thorax, the dubbing at the back, I'll tie it against the bead. At this point, when you come forward, you want basically pheasant tail to come either side, bring your dubbing. Now, if you can see, the, there's your pheasant tail fibres. Now, I don't think the fish will be too fussy if these legs are not there, but just to show you how you can actually make your fly like that we touch better by doing that. Now what I'm doing here is I'm building up the dubbing in front of the bead up nice and tight. This tightens the bead up up against the body. Check my legs. Now I may have caught, I have caught a couple of legs now. What I'm going to do is see they're down the bottom there. Just come back, bring the dubbing back. Just take your time coming back. See, there's your legs there. It does happen. Just got to go back. It's easy to go back. So you come in again. The dubbing in front of the bead. And there's your legs now. See them? Even leaving some of these guard fibers laying towards the back. And then, see how you're looking. Your fly's going to sit like this in the water. You sit upside down like that. See it. If you want a wee tiny bit more, I don't want too much more flash on there, so I've got some more of the fox squirrel. Just come in. And then, put a wee bit more dubbing at the front. Anything going forward of the eye, just draw it back. Again, another wee look. That's fine, that's better. Now, to varnish, all I do is come in, some varnish onto the thread, and then wet finish. Now, you come in with your fingers here, just throw any fibres that's going forward with the eye, just draw them back. 
You may catch one or two, don't worry. And then tighten the thread up for it finish. At this point you could actually trim away any fibers that you've caught. There's one there. Any long fibers like this one here you can take away. And there we go. You don't want to be too fussy with the fly, but you want it to look at it. You want that nice shape. See how it looks. Ah, that's fine. I'm not going to do any more. But you'll see the beads nice and tight. And uh, as it say, it sits up like that. Now I use a Rapala knot. I don't know if you've ever then it's tied. I, I used to tie it a lot when I was a ghillie. So, um, it's, it's easy to find on the internet, you'll see it. But, here's, this is some three pound nylon. So what I'm going to do is basically just form a knot onto the nylon. It's a normal knot that you don't want normally. There we go. Pull that in. That's like a stop knot. Put that through the eye. It's got a wee bit of dubbing on the second. Now there's your basically what I'd call your stop knot. Now tailor your nylon through there. Pull it down as close. You want it you don't want it too long. And basically hold the the loop you're gonna form with the nylon as you twist it around the main nylon and as well as the small open knot that you've formed on the nylon just wind it round now much like you would do a blood knot I usually do about four turns anyway put it through the, the loop that you form plus the small open knot pull it keep it small, pull both nylons because the, the hook's on the vice it's easy to do pull it tight and then cut away the waist piece and it neat and there we are the, the Rapala knot is nice and straight as you can see the loop straight from the nylon and not at an angle now if I let this go you know, your fly should sit like that and there we go sticking to my face but you'll see it. and that's your basically the way it's going to fish in the water at that angle and it says if you tain the bead if you tie it in further down it would be more like not exactly 90 degrees but it would be more of an angle but there you go and that's how you tie what I call simply as the upright nymph uh, whatever way you tie your, whatever nymph you're tying if you tie it in that way all set. But as I said, it's a great way of using up these beads that really that is sitting. I've got a box, as I say, I've got a box of filled up over the years uh, that I can't get onto hooks at all, but I can use it like that in this style. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll show you, just cut the nylon off. It's just an olive pheasant tail nymph. As I say, upright nymph. So, I hope you enjoy the tying. Give it a go. Obviously, let me know how you got on.